In this video, we're going to find out what's new in version 6 of Harrison Mixbus 32C. Hey guys, I'm Dr. McFarland and welcome back to the channel. Today is an exciting day because we have new features for Mixbus 32C and this is version 6. So what you're seeing here on the screen is a new fresh layout. Uh, all the buttons are a little bit clearer looking with the slightly like higher in gray look to them. I can still bring in my mix buses, bring those in and out. And I have a 32 inch screen. So the biggest thing that most people was requesting was a way to see more stuff on the screen, just have more real estate available. So what Harrison has done is this area right here, you can see I got a black area and then I have the sands right here. So if I hold shift and press S, I can get rid of the sins or make them pop back up, whatever I want. And if I directly hit E, that's going to switch everything over to the EQ. And I can see the EQ a lot better now. Before, it was a little bit small. It is kind of hard to see. And one thing you'll notice down here is let's say if I move the high pass filter, you can now see that it's not a percentage anymore, but you actually see the frequencies that you're adjusting, which is awesome. That was one of my biggest complaints before. I just wanted to be able to see the frequency instead of a percentage, because yes, we're still using our ears, but you know when you have a visual on the screen, you want to be able to see it with your eyes. So I'm glad they updated that. And let's look at the sweepable bands here. So if I adjust the frequency, let's say I keep it at 6K right here. When I start bringing up the volume, it's going to bring up the volume, but it's also going to sweep up the frequency as well. And the reason why that is, the nature of the EQ on the 32C console, it was more of a gradual change instead of a exact change on the in the frequency response. And that's why the percentage was there in the first place. It was always gradually changing along with the volume increase and the frequency was increasing as well. So that was my understanding from my conversation with Ben and he really helped explain that to me. So if I was going to use this EQ on the cymbals, you know, if I wanted to bring this down, it's going to be a gradual decrease based on the volume range. Even though this is at around six, I'm gonna bring that down. You can see that's not gonna be an exact change just at that frequency, but it is a really smart way of doing it. Now right, here's the editor view, and we can still see if I hit Shift E in this view, it actually gets rid of the track view over here. So Shift E has a different function than it does if you are in the mixer view. So that's one thing you have to get used to as well. But once I got that figured out and mixed a few songs, then the workflow is just fine. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at some of the other features that was introduced. So we have a fifth generation processing engine, including latency compensation and queue monitoring. Mixbuses 1 through 8 can now assign to Mixbuses 9 through 12, permitting their use as dedicated effects buses or metric outputs. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So if I do Shift B, that's going to bring up my buses. And I'm going to scroll this out a little bit more so I can see all 12. And you can see now that, yes, we do have our sins have actual names beside the buses. And before it was just the volume controls and the dots, but now the dots are much clearer and you have names which correlate to the buses over here, which is great. And let's say I had a delay on this bus and then we had some reverbs on the other ones. And I wanted to send a background vocal to the delay bus. Well, now I can do that just by clicking delay. I can control the overall send volume to that delay from the actual bus itself. So, which is great because I can hit spill. I can see all the tracks that are being sent to that bus. And then instead of sending these two tracks individually 
to the delay bus, I can just go ahead and do it from here, which is really, really neat. And we do have the graphical operation improvements largely suggested by forum users that improve mixed buses usability on smaller monitors. So that's the whole reason why they went ahead and did the shift E, shift S. So you can swap back and forth between the sense and the EQ and they don't have to try and share space on the screen and it's just as easy to go back and forth and i know some guys wanted a pop out window for the eq but this to me is just as good and pop outs could get confusing pretty quick and if you want an eq then you can always bring in an eq like this or there's also the ava eq if you go to crater harrison consoles and here's the ava legacy so you can have your visual EQ right there and it's just as easy to do that. But if you want a good general EQ for most tracks, then popping this one up on the screen and adjusting things is pretty quick and easy. So there's a region list that is redesigned and a new source list that helps you manage recording takes and organize imported files such as loops. So here's the editor view and we have all the regions that we have in the editor window. And we can always arm tracks in here or we can hide certain tracks if you want to. And you can also rename tracks within here. And you can hit the tab key for this. So if you want to rename tracks within there, instead of doing it over here, then that's just as easy to do. And you notice that if the groups are on, it's going to highlight all those groups at the same time. And there is a new cut tool providing a faster and clearer way to split regions with a dedicated tool mode. So if you go over here, we're currently on the smart tool, which allows me to do different stuff based on where the actual mouse is. So I can go in here, press F. All right, so C is selecting the cut tool. D is going back to draw. And then G is going back to grab mode. So they literally made each function work just the same way as you would expect. So everything's labeled by their first initial. So hitting that C mode can allow you to go in and just cut right where the mouse and then hit G again. You can go in and select different things and move things around and do whatever you want. We can import and export MP3s on a Mac, Windows, and Linux, which is great because you never know what kind of source material you're going to be working with. And having that ability to work with MP3s, especially on the import, is a pretty flexible feature. And there is a virtual MIDI keyboard, which I'll probably go into in a different video. But I did want to keep this relatively short and just kind of highlight some of the features that I liked about what I was seeing. And that's really about it. So if you want to watch more videos about Harrison Mixbus 32C, feel free to go ahead and subscribe down below and click the bell icon every time I release new videos. I will be working my way through a video manual, which I've already started last year, and I will continue to do that in the next coming months, just working my way through each section. So that way you have a good visual representation of what the manual is trying to communicate and it's kind of fun just to go through and make sure I'm learning how to do all these things myself because I still don't know everything about Mixbus. And it's just a good learning tool to walk through the whole manual and make sure I understand every single aspect of what is capable within this great piece of software. So I am Dr. McFarland. I will see you in the next video. Keep rocking.